marketing specialist and the author of the blog, Learning at the Primary Pond. And I thought today we would chat a little bit about bulletin boards since um, most of us are heading back to school or already back to school here in the US and Canada anyway. I know my Canadian teacher friends have a little bit more time, but for me, bulletin boards have been, or they used to be kind of a giant pain in the booty. I'm not somebody who, you know, absolutely loves making them. I'm not super crafty, unfortunately. I wish that I were, but it's just not me. But what I have learned are some little hacks that make putting up the bulletin boards a lot easier, but even more importantly, taking care of them throughout the year and um, maintaining them because not only am I not good at getting them up there in the first place, but I'm also not good at maintaining them. I could literally go without like changing a board the entire year and just completely forget because my mind is focused on other things. Um, and I know the learning environment is really important and we should be paying attention to things like that. So I just had to find ways to make it easy for myself to do that. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today is the ways that I use to make a bulletin board um, like maintenance and putting them up in the first place a lot easier. So if you're watching, would love to know what grade you're teaching this coming year or this year. And also if you love bulletin boards or if they are not your favorite thing. Um, I'm curious how you feel about them. I know so many teachers are just amazing at putting up these wonderful bulletin boards and they look so cute, but it's never come naturally to me. So I'm curious to hear where you are on that sort of spectrum. Um, but let's go ahead and dive in. So a couple of principles kind of guided me in setting up my bulletin boards this way. I didn't always use to, I used to use like the giant butcher paper and your typical, like, I don't know, I would say like teacher store letters that I would buy or like the die cut kind of thing. And that's how I used to do them. And if you do them that way, great. If it works for you, great. But some of the stuff that I do now is a lot more durable, which means that I can use it over and over again, these materials, which is really great. And then um, another thing I was thinking about when I was first setting up my bulletin boards this way is that I wanted them to um, look sort of finished for the beginning of the year, but I wanted the kids to take part in creating them because I don't believe in having a classroom where the kids come in and like everything's done and it's like perfect. And it looks like, you know, not like the kids just haven't participated in creating it. So I wanted them to have some sort of, you know, like feeling like, hey, like, yeah, like we're creating this classroom. Like my work is displayed here. I'm part of this. So I wanted that. But I also didn't want parents to walk in for like back to school night or whatever you call it at your school where maybe they come in and meet the teacher and meet the teacher night. That's what I was looking for. Meet the teacher, make um, drop up their supplies, all that good stuff. I didn't want it to look totally bare. So I didn't want, I wanted something between like a like totally bare walls and a, a room that was completely decorated already. So that's something that guided me. And then another thing, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, is I wanted to be able to change out the bulletin boards frequently to create a, like a, especially in primary, like a print rich learning environment that was relevant to what we were working on. But I didn't want to have to take down like all the paper, change the border, or even, you know how sometimes if you're using paper, like, and you take something off, like sometimes it rips it or whatever. I just, I don't feel like we're all so busy. Like I didn't feel like I had the time or the motivation, frankly, to redo a bulletin board every time I wanted to display something new. It just wasn't working for me. So with those three kind of principles in mind, this is what I came up with. And I wish I had like a real live bulletin board here to share with you, but I'm showing you this photo because I think that's the best thing. Okay, so this was a bulletin board that I did and it says math on it, but I've actually done them. You know, I've done, you can have like one for math, one for reading, whatever you want. But so in this example, you can see um, that I have just like your typical border and I have this same border here. I think this is learning resources maybe. And just, I like something simple. So polka dots are good for me. I don't remember where I got this from. Might've been a teacher store, but I think it's available online as well. And then the backing of the bulletin board is this cloth. And I got this from Joanne Fabrics a long time ago, and it actually holds up really well. Um, I don't recall how much it cost. It wasn't like crazy expensive. I think I might have gotten something on sale, but it lasts for years, which is super amazing. So the back is this cloth. And what I like to do is I like to make the backing paper dark so that when you're just putting plain old like white stuff up there, um, you know, like charts that we're making, chart paper, it just, it really pops. And then, so I do a, a kind of a dark background. 
and then I'll do you know like a lighter type of border so that's like the basics that's what's up there and then you'll see in the middle that I have I think I brought, yeah I have these letters and um, I just I like the circular ones I've actually created these and in the post I think there should be a link to part of my TPT store where it has like different designs in these but I just like how this looks um, you can have one for each subject you could have like a word wall whatever you want I just created these because I liked how they look. And then the other thing that you can probably see, and I don't know how big it is for you, is that there's these, these blank kind of rectangles. And so this is what the board looked like at the very beginning of the school year before the kids came. Again, back to that balance of like not having totally bare walls, but also not like entirely, you know, putting stuff up and making the kids feel like it wasn't their room, like it was my room and they weren't going to participate. So anyway, you see these rectangles and these are actually just made out of ribbon. And this ribbon is from a craft store. I don't remember which one. Um, it is, how big is it? It's like an inch, I would say, seven eighths of an inch. Um, and so I, I formed these rectangles and these are the size of chart paper. So this was, I just literally took a piece of chart paper and stuck the ribbon around it. And then what you can see very small on top, these are closed ends. And the regular clothespins, I didn't spend money on anything fancy, but what I did is I took like, uh, what do you call it? Scrapbooking paper, which is kind of thick. You could even probably do it with cardstock. And I used Mod Podge or glue gun, I don't remember. I think it was Mod Podge. And I like just like put a little strip of uh, scrapbooking paper right across. And so it stayed really well. I believe it was Mod Podge. And then on the back, what I did is I hot glue gunned like a little tack or whatever you want to call it so that I could stick this straight onto the paper or not, not the paper the um you know the bulletin board with with the cloth and I put two of them there and so then what that creates is a spot for you to put anchor charts because there's like two of them right and so I loved this because the e it's the easiest thing when you have an anchor chart like up here I remember um from this particular year and I've done this in different classrooms with different subjects different bulletin boards but this particular example like we would have an ongoing math strategies anchor chart that we would work on. And so it would live like in these clips right here. But then when I wanted to work on it or add to it, I would just unclip, take it off, like stick it to the, the um, dry erase board and with magnets. And then we'd like add something to it. So it was a class created chart. And then I could just literally put it back on. So that was amazing because it made it like a, a living chart, right? Like we could add to it, I could put it back there, the kids were contributing to it. Um, and so I had like an ongoing, I think, chart of, of math strategies, but then I would have something specific to whatever we were working on. So a chart that had to do with, you know, the geometry unit that we were doing or something specific. And then in the middle, the middle was kind of just up for grabs. Um, you can you can put student work in the middle. This wasn't necessarily like a student work display. I'll show you some more about how I display student work in a minute. But um, you can, you know, if there's little posters or whatever, like if you use any of my resources, there's a lot of little posters and you can kind of fit those in the middle. This was a pretty large board that I was fortunate to have. So um, whatever, you know, whatever I needed to display would go there. And then I had just trying to picture this classroom. I had a math one. I had a reading one. I, I might have had a, a writing one too. Um, science and social studies actually went on these kind of <laughs> ugly brown cabinets um, because I didn't have enough room for a science and social studies bulletin board. But speaking of the ugly brown cabinets, if you have sometimes on like Pinterest or blogs, I see where teachers are like painting the cabinets in their rooms, which sounds awesome, but I've never either ask to do that because I was too afraid or I've never done it myself. But sometimes you have like those like brown cabinets that are just kind of nasty. Maybe they're worn down. Let me know if you have something like that in your room. But a really easy fix is to take a scrapbook paper. Again, it's kind of like this large size. You could even do like cardstock if that's what you have. And I laminated it. And then I used, I think it was just like, you know, I might have hot glue gunned it or sticky tack, I think it was hot glue, to the cabinets. And um, then on top of this, you can, you know, display, I had like vocabulary cards, you can just display little things on it. Um, you can also take this kind of thing, not on cabinets, but on like a, a full bulletin board, like this that I have here, and you can do this hot glue gun thing with the clothespin, 
and you can stick it like right here and you can actually display student work on it. So each child would have like a little, and it doesn't have to be scrap of paper, it could be like cardstock, but they would have a little place where their work is displayed. And again, coming back to my theme of being easy to rotate in or out, with this, it's not staple, staple, staple. I, I hate stapling, I hate pulling down staples. With this, you just, you have this part up on your bulletin board all year long and you just, you know, unclip their work. And then the nice thing too is it doesn't destroy their work because I always hate that they work on something and then we're so excited to display it, but then when I give it back to them or keep it for like a sample and, and a, you know, a portfolio or whatever I have for them, it gets kind of messed up from the staples. So this is another um, great option for that. So again, this scrap of paper I've used just on cabinets to kind of like cover up the ugly. And I've also used it to display student work with a little clip like this. And actually, Jeanette, I know I missed some comments. So thanks everybody for commenting, but I just happened to see Jeanette's comment from the corner of my eye and she has whiteboards and that's actually what I want to talk about next because I have also been in a case where I had like multiple whiteboards. And so one thing you can do is there are magnetic, instead of like this, there exists magnetic little strips. I actually, I have some here. I just don't want to leave you to pull it out, but it's, uh, you know, the little borders, but they're magnetic, a little bit expensive, but that's one option. Um, instead of, so instead of doing the little clothespin tack here, Jeanette and anybody else who has whiteboards, where did I put it? You can create a backing that's magnetic and that is super nice. So these are, um, like off, uh, what do you call them? Business cards that I just, I don't remember where I got these. There were like a ton of them and they weren't that cheap, but they're magnetic and you can get like magnetic backing somewhere at a craft store or whatever, Amazon. But so this peels off here and you can cut it. And so you can take a clothespin, you can like make it cute if you want. And then instead of doing the little tag, you can put magnetic stripping here. So then you have these magnets that will hold stuff. And again, that can hold student work, that can hold anchor charts. So even if you don't have a lot of bulletin boards like this, you can still absolutely use these kind of ideas. And then another thing that I like for bulletin boards is I like to have, you know, they're so big sometimes and you wanna write different things up there. Like if you have to display your objectives, you wanna write the date and all that. And um, I like to have different sections. And so what you can do, I think I've used washi tape maybe, washi tape, or some kind of, maybe it was just even colored masking tape to section off the board, which is really nice. And then another thing you can do is just create these little signs. Maybe you have to display objectives, maybe you're displaying something else, but you can take the business cards like I was showing, and you can peel off the backing, the magnetic business cards, peel off the backing, and attach the little strips here and then voila you can display this on your whiteboard and it gives a little section you know outline it with your washi tape or i think just regular masking tape that was colored is what i used and that's really nice as well okay trying to think if there's anything else i'm going to talk about so we talked about the little clothespins anchor charts there um, we talked about how to make those magnetic and then this is just a close-up picture but i was able to show you in person so you can see that um, Claudia says, I just moved to a room without windows, so I have lots of walls to cover. I just can't decide how to make sure it won't get too dark. Yeah, for sure, that's hard. I don't know, I don't, I've never been in a room without windows. No, correction, I was one year, but it was actually a closet. I was doing reading intervention, and fortunately we had good overhead lights. But I don't know, I don't, you know, I don't know if I would do um, a lot of like dark backgrounds if I was in a room with no windows, at least not if I had a ton of bulletin boards. I always do like a light blue or something or the other thing too is once these like this looks dark but once they're actually covered with charts and papers the white really is what stands out this is just more of like a small edging kind of background so that helps a little bit Lorraine says Lorraine glad you can make it <laughs> with this time zone she says what about word walls what would work to display your high frequency words so I really like, I go back and forth on word walls and it's not because I don't think that they're helpful because I 100% think that they are. I think it's very powerful to say like, you are responsible for spelling these words correctly. You know, here are the words that you've learned. Couple of things make this more complicated. One, depending on what your class is like, you may be teaching high frequency words in a smaller group setting and so not all the kids know the same words so that's one issue another issue is space right like 
if you have limited space and you have a big word wall, that may take up like half your classroom wall space. And I think in some ways it can be more powerful to display like charts that you're working on in student work. So it's always a choice of like, do I do this or do I do something else? Now, if you have enough space to do it all, like why not? But another option is like a phonics wall. Maybe you have the sounds that you're working on and like different examples of words with those sounds. There's just so many different options. And so I know a lot of teachers I've talked to and myself have really struggled with like, do I include a word wall? Do I not? And so I wish I had like a perfect answer and I would love to, you know, hear what you all think. Um, would love to have you chime in in the comments there. But with with I would say like second grade and not maybe even first grade, what's worked for me is to have like a personal dictionary where the kids are adding high frequency words that they're learning. And this is something that they have out during writing time can be in their writing folder and they just whenever they're writing, they take it out and they keep those there. And that saves um, wall space basically in this classroom here that I took the photo in this year I didn't have one and that particular year and I was trying out the little word booklets and they worked okay sometimes I am not great about remembering to actually have them add words so that's one challenge um, but it did solve the challenge of everybody working on different words it solved the challenge of having a place that kids could put like if a child was really obsessed with dinosaurs they could, you know, I could write certain dinosaurs names in there for them to spell over and over again. It was kind of like a more personal reference book, which is nice. And it solved my problem of not having enough wall space. So, Lorraine, I don't know if that if that helps at all, but that is one other option. This particular year that I'm thinking of, I have a friend who was also a first and second grade teacher. And she, what she did is we had, it was almost like a beam in the middle of our rooms. And she had ribbon thicker than this obviously, but she had ribbon hanging down and she had like little white cards with, you know, like the, the letter would be at the top, like A, and then she might have a card that says at and and, and they were like stapled on here. And so they would hang down from the ceiling. And I think that worked well from her. From what I remember, sometimes the words would fall down once in a while, um, which was annoying, but you know, that can happen with any wall but it, it looked cute and that's another option if you want to display the words rather than have like a personal booklet without using a wall space, that is a, another option. All right, let's see. I do not think I've missed any other questions, but if you do have any questions later or you're watching this and it's not live, feel free to come back and add them. I did, I believe in the post description include the link for these letters um, when I print these. So, the letter link here in, um, or I'm sorry, the letters that I linked to are in Teachers Pay Teachers and they're just printable. But what I like to do is I like to either print them on cardstock and laminate them or use a kind of lamination that's thicker. And in the schools where I've worked in my school, the laminate is like thin. But when I do, when I either get it done at like Office Depot, which I rarely do because it's really expensive, or I use my own personal scotch laminator that is thicker. And so I want to find the thickest laminate that I can for these just because you can use them year after year after year. These letters that I have here are five or six years old. No. Yeah, they're, they're six years old now or even seven, they're six or seven years old and they've lasted this long. And when you just put like one little push pin at the top, it doesn't mess them up too bad. But if you do them on cardstock or laminate, that's really helpful too, because it just makes them durable and you can use them again. I've taken them out. I've, you know, I've used them in different classrooms. I'm not in that classroom anymore, um, but that is really helpful too. So those are all on TPT for you. And I think that's it. So I would love to hear your bulletin board hacks. I hope this was helpful to you. Do feel free to add other questions or comments. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.